Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thank you Hi. all very much. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I, uh, well, welcome. We are the 36th District Democrats. Today we are interviewing Nimco Bulali with the um with the Seattle Yes on Seattle Prop One uh, Yes on Homes campaign. I'll let you go ahead and give your introduction. <laughs> So good evening, everybody. Thank you all so much for having me again. Um, some of you I met, I believe, last month, and it's a pleasure to meet you all now. Um, to start, dramatic increases in Seattle's housing costs impact everyone in our community, but the burden has fallen most heavily on low-income neighbors, working families, and people of color. The housing levy is our single most effective tool to improve housing stability and equity, providing homes and housing assistance that advance individual and community health, safety, and well-being. Since 1986, the levy has been Seattle's foundational tool for affordable housing and has created or preserved over 12,000 affordable homes, which house 16,000 neighbors today. Our current housing levy is set to expire at the end of 2023. Without renewal, we will dramatically limit our ability to create the affordable housing Seattle desperately needs. The mayor, city council, housing advocates, labor, businesses, service providers, and many more came together to propose the housing levy renewal package following months of community engagement. The 2023 renewal um, generates 970 million over the next seven years to do the following, produce and preserve 3,500 new affordable homes for low income households and reinvest in existing affordable housing, stabilize 4,500 individuals and families at risk of eviction and homelessness through rental assistance and case management. It will help 1,150 formerly homeless residents and people with service needs to live in stable supportive homes through operations funding for permanent supportive housing. And it creates and maintains 360 affordable home ownership opportunities targeted to marginalized communities. Levy renewal also provides wage support, career training, and professional development for caregivers in supportive and emergency housing, improving and expanding services we need to help people out of homelessness, substance use, and behavioral health crises. In addition, the levy leverages short-term loans to purchase buildings and land for affordable housing. Renewing the Seattle Housing Levy Scales is proven tool to meet urgent demands, to meet the urgent demands of the moment, creating new homes, providing emergency, uh, emergency assistance to reduce homelessness, and addressing the staffing needs of transitional and supportive housing. That's why it's, it has been endorsed by the mayor and council, the United Way of King County, CMAR, Interim CDA, the Chief Seattle Club, El Centro de la Raza, the Urban League of Metropolitan Seattle, YWCA, Youth Cares, the Seattle Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce, MLK Labor, and so many more. Please join the diverse and grouping, uh, gr growing list of supporters by endorsing the Seattle Housing Levy and participating in the effort to ensure its renewal. You can always learn more about the campaign on our campaign website at yesforhomes.org. In addition to endorsing the campaign, we need volunteers to help us spread the word about the importance of renewing the levy to voters' doors on the phone and in the community. You can provide your contact information to me today or email the campaign at info at yesforhomes.org. In addition to volunteering, we are working hard to raise the resources needed to pass the levy. If you are interested in supporting the campaign financially or helping raise campaign funds, please provide your contact information to me this evening, and I'll make sure that somebody reaches out to you from the campaign. Um, that is what I prepared for this evening, and I would love to open it up for questions. Thank you. Um, anybody uh, have any questions? Um, no, I, I guess, I'll, oh, Sherry. Yeah. Um, we all did at the same time. Um, <laughs> can you let us know um, how much more or less the levy will be compared to what we're what the previous, the one that's expiring? Is yes. that, uh, do you understand my question? Yeah, so you're okay. asking about what the total levy package was in 2016? Yeah, and then, and then, so, I mean, as a, as a person who has to pay property tax, and especially mm -hmm. as a person on fixed income, I want to know 
how much more I'll be paying or how much less I'll be paying in the yes. next seven years. Um, so those are, I, I believe, two questions that you're asking, Sherry. One is about how much the increase will be. So the seven, this seven-year levy will cost $383 per year or $32 a month to the owner of a medium value home. Um, the increase over the current levy is over um, is roughly 140 per year or about $12 per month. So the current levy was $140 a year, and this current levy will be $383 a year, or $32 a month versus $12 a month that it was before. But I, I mean, I do also want to share that the most recent 2016 levy exceeded initial projections, building on the levy's historical records of success. And so um, in terms of new homes, there were the previous levy uh, produced 2,741 per, produced compared to planned, which was 2,150. Um, in terms of preservation, I did want to add that uh, the 2016 levy had um, was the projected was 530 projects, but it it exceeded that, um, and it create it preserved over 350 homes. No, I'm sorry, the pre, sorry, the planned was 350, and it actually created 530. And in terms of home ownership, um, it assisted uh, 370 families were assisted compared to the 280 projected. So definitely a huge success, historic success, and. Um, we're hoping that the 2023 levy will also be able to do something like that. Thank you. Um, Cora Marie. Uh, thank you, Nimco, and thank you, Sherry. That was literally the question because I think it's on a, at the top of a lot of people's minds. And Absolutely. so instead, I will ask the inverse of that. And what would happen if this did not pass? I mean, we would have a crisis in our hands. I mean, I think like I'd mentioned at the or at the beginning of this uh, conversation, it's our single most effective tool to improve housing stability and equity in the city. Um, you know, like I said, the, since 1986, uh, though I, I can't remember how many levies that's been, my math is not great. The levy has really been that foundational tool for affordable housing and has created and preserved over 12,000 affordable homes, which houses 16,000 of our neighbors today. And so, um, you know, I can't underscore this, I think, the the severity of um, the housing crisis if this levy was not passed. Um, I, have, I have a question. Um, um, so I, um, given how much housing costs have increased, um, would... Um, what are things that can be done to once again exceed the expectations of what we are trying to do with this levy? Um, Tell yeah. me again, what would we need to do? Is that what you asked? Well, I'm 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 just saying, like, um, you know, uh, how I'm I'm just sort of thinking, like, one of the things I've heard a lot in the last few years is how much building costs and construction of new housing the costs have increased. So, is it realistic to expect that we would be able to exceed the um, the um, the num the the numbers in the plan again? That's a really good question. I mean, we're optimistic, um, but you're absolutely right. Uh, rising costs of land, construction materials, and making sure we pay living wages for building homes contributes to the overall size of the levy package. Um, where possible, I think the levy will seek to maximize the number of units and reduce costs. And the track record for the levy of the levy shows that we can maximize these funds beyond projection. So I think that we are very optimistic. But again, you're absolutely right. Everything is just so much more expensive. And so I think part of this of this of this price tag um, is that is, you know, I think being considerate of 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 all those factors. Uh, Barbara. Thanks. Um, so I, uh, this is a question to help us um, campaign for you. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain uh, really quickly what the relationship between this levy is and Seattle Housing Authority? Um, uh, what, uh, who administers these funds and um, does it go all or in part to Seattle Housing Authority? Uh, help me out so that I just 
No, because I get asked that question. Um, that is a very good question, uh, Barbara, and I don't want to misspeak. I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure about the relationship with the Seattle housing levy, and that's not to say that there is or there isn't, but let me get back to you on that and see. Okay, thanks very much. A different, I think it's a different bu bucket of money um, in terms of um, those, I think those connections that you're talking about. I know a lot of folks have also asked about the social housing uh bill, the, the levy that's passed as well. And that's just a completely different funding stream. And so I want to say that those are separate buckets. But again, I want to make sure that I'm answering that correctly. And uh, we'll, we'll find out for you and let you Thank all you know. very much. Absolutely. I think Chelsea has a question. I do. It's in a similar vein as Barbara wanting to advocate for this. What do you say to people when they worry about the landlords that will have their property taxes raised and that will inevitably be passed down to us as renters? Um, I know that there is, uh, there's provisions in the, um, in the levy. A lot of it, I think, goes towards uh, rental protections and rental assistance. And so I think in factoring in the need to think about what those costs will be to the renters, um, there are, um, I don't have that in front of me. There's like a pie chart that shows how much of like the levy dollars will go towards rental assistance and protections and how much will go towards home ownership and preservation and permanent supportive housing. And so what I can do is I believe we have a one pager that I could um, see if I could add here. Um, it says accessing files is restricted, but I can follow up with that one pager or I can, let me actually see if I can find it on the, there's a breakdown and I just don't have it in front of me, but I can definitely, I can follow up in addition to Barbara's answer, can follow up with what that, what that is. Um, but I think that is all to say, Chelsea, that, uh, you know, when in creating the package, there were so many different stakeholders that works, you know, um, that were a part of what this package will look like and rental protections was a huge part as we know that there's such a huge need for that to make sure that folks that are housed are being able to stay in their house and can, you know, that the housing is truly affordable again, and that is, you know, within 30% of folks' income. And so, um, you know, the, the quick answer is there's absolutely rental, there's protections for renters. Um, the longer answer is that I will get you that one pager that has those specific breakdowns. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Barbara, do you have another question? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm my hand. <laughs> um, yeah, any other questions? Um, I, can, I can throw in another one. Um, uh, when you're talking about preserving uh, affordable housing, um, obviously one problem with uh, older buildings is um, it may be higher utility costs because they may not be as well insulated. Um, does this levy do anything to help uh, keep the cost of actually living in these houses aside from rent down? Yeah, I know that there's pieces in there about uh, preservation um, of existing of existing homes um, and that there's money in there. You just give me one second. I'm, I'm hoping to find that presentation. That is not it. Let's see. So um, for the 2023 levy, um, again, the, so, and I think this is also part of Chelsea's question was, um, there's seven of, of the entire 970 million, 707 million is going towards rental production and preservation. Um, and so that's, I mean, a huge chunk of that. And then we also have piece, pieces in here for home ownership, for prevention of, um, you know, of get prevention around like making sure that folks are not being taken, you know, evicted and taken, you know, being kicked out of their homes. And then there's also money in there, about 30 million for acquisition and preservation. Um, 
and you know, there's other pieces in there. There's um, there's operating maintenance and services, and I think that goes towards your question, Jeremy. Um, that's kind of the the projective piece that we have, uh, what we have projected for that, and we're hoping that for the seven um, um, yeah, so about 600 and 631 million over the seven years will go to rental production and preservation. And then I think with the home ownership investments, there's pieces in there for new home, home buyers, um, pieces in there for home owner stabilization. And then there's homeless prevention, eviction prevention, and resident services, as well as acquisition and opportunity loan programs. So, and again, I think I forgot to mention that there's a huge workforce piece in there as well that includes workforce stabilization for uh, existing permanent supporting housing units. Uh, thank you. Uh, any yeah. other questions? Uh, hearing none, if you just want to take a minute or two to wrap up, or uh, two minutes, you know, it, two minutes or less to wrap up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as you know, um, I think I'm I'm preaching to the choir, but you know, we are at a place right now where it is so important for us to invest and renew the housing levy and um, investing housing and affo housing affordability if we're going to be able to uh, make a dent in our in the crisis that's currently happening in our um, in our city. And so um, this is an equity issue. This is an issue that impacts all of us and everyone in our community. Um, and again, the housing levy is our single most effective tool to improve housing stability and equity. And I really hope that you all will consider endorsing that campaign, our campaign. Um, yeah, thank you. So I think that concludes the interview. So um, we can um, uh, we can finish recording now, um, and we'll just briefly.